I wanted to show you guys how I take footage from my camera and kind of run some tests on it, kind of kick the tires on it to see if I actually want to use it for a production. It's really important that you choose a good camera and a good workflow and everything when you're going to make a project that matters to you. So the lovely folks over at Nikon asked if I could kick the tires on some of the footage from their Z8 camera. I haven't looked at this footage yet at all. And so we're going to open it up and resolve, see what it can do. And I'll give you my honest opinion on whether I would shoot with this camera or not. They have some sample video files here on their website that I just downloaded. And these are available in N-Log in a couple different formats. One of them being their .nev format, which is their Nikon RAW. So downloaded those, unzipped those, and imported them into Resolve just on a new timeline. And here we are. Just zoom in here a little bit. And the first thing I want to do is just look at this log signal and see if there's anything obviously weird. If it's just clipping a bunch of color or something like that, that would be no good. This looks as expected with a log signal. We have pretty much all of the information here kind of between 128 and 640 ish. And depending on the type of log that makes sense. But what we're really looking for is, is there just a bright white line on any of these signals? Is anything being clipped and then kind of pushed down? Because sometimes what'll happen is you'll have sort of like a fake log and this happens with cheaper cameras or older cameras. They'll have some kind of curve built into their signal that just isn't log. It just kind of makes things darker and it doesn't really do you any good you know but obviously this looks great i would expect nothing less but you know that's my first thing i look at the other thing is i'll go over to the camera raw tab here and under decode quality let's just say full res decode using let's just say clip and here we can get into the raw signal and adjust things and we'll just see how this feels see what this does when we push the exposure around make sure things just don't break or feel super weird and there's really like not a lot to do here but i do like to kind of play around with this and make sure that there's there isn't some strange thing where if I push the color temperature over, it just looks weird or anything like that. But really we should be looking at this through a color transform of some kind. So let's go ahead and load that. Now, we don't have a color space transform in Resolve that will work for N-Log, but we can use one of their LUTs. So I'm gonna go over to the LUT browser here in the color page in the upper left, click on this, right click on here where it says LUTs and say open file location. And I've downloaded their LUTs here. There's several different ones to choose from. And let's just take this whole folder. I've just renamed it Nikon and I'm just going to drag it into our LUTs folder like that. And then let's go over here, right click and say refresh. And now we have Nikon right here. So now any of these LUTs, we should be able to put this on our footage and that should look pretty good. And there are several different kinds of LUTs for this. Let's just go ahead and use this Z9. And we have a couple versions. We have this one, just double click to add this one. And then let's right click on this clip here and we'll go up to local versions and say create new version. We'll have version two here. And then we'll take the version two of the LUT and put that on this one. And I can hit control N on the keyboard to go in between between these and so one of these is just a little brighter the other one is not as bright let's just see which one we like I think I like this darker one this version one let's see how this looks on the other shots I'm just gonna middle button mouse click here on our other shots and just see how that looks and let's just full screen this yeah and this kind of thing when you have a color transform of some kind that's designed for your camera if it was shot right and exposed correctly and all of that stuff it should look pretty darn good yes we could certainly add some contrast and some saturation and, and you know pop certain aspects of the image but it should look just with the transform on it it should look good and that's certainly the case for this love the colors nothing is overly crushed or anything like that let's go to this next shot oh just gorgeous we have nice gradation back here there isn't any banding or anything like that that's kind of a big thing especially with more compressed formats of course this is raw i wouldn't expect a lot of banding there that looks really nice face looks great these skin tones look great you can see kind of the reddish and the pinkish in the skin as well as kind of those those like kind of purple undertones that kind of thing and just overall this looks really 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 nice here with the sky again this is one where you get a lot of banding sometimes depending on the footage and the compression and everything and this just looks pristine man i can't imagine being frustrated about this so i mean first glance this looks pretty nice there's not a lot of noise especially kind of in the darker parts here looking for noise there isn't kind of any patterns or dancing noise or anything like that going on here it looks really really good now let's get a, a little bit crazy here here before our let let's just take this exposure way up 
Let's just punch it up. I'm going to expose this, you know, two stops over and let's just see what that looks like. So there we're starting to get a little bit of noise just here in the darker parts. We also get a little bit of banding here. And that's again, I mean, this is just you wouldn't you would never do this, but just seeing how far this footage can be pushed. And there in the darker parts, we do see a little bit of this noise. But again, it's not something that's awful. So very, very usable. There isn't some awful pattern. You do see a little bit of stripes here in the noise, but it's really, really easy to deal with. I mean, again, this is pushed up more than we're probably ever going to push it up if we shot this decently. So I don't see that as an issue. This is as good or better as any footage I've seen. Let's take this exposure down. Just really push this down a little bit. Again, just take a look. And this time I'm looking at these highlights and if there's actually detail in these highlights and if that looks natural when we take that exposure down and if there's anything that's just glaring, weird. And I mean, so far, gosh, it's really good. So let's just switch this back to decode using say camera metadata. This is just how these were shot. This one I'd say is maybe just a touch dark right here it still looks good and it works great for this this part right here but I mean if we wanted to up the exposure here like this would be kind of a more realistic situation where maybe you know we wanted to you know go into node sizing or something just zoom this in and maybe there's just a shot of her hands, right? Let's take something like this, which again, realistically, I'd probably just be in the primary wheels and do something like this offset. Let's just close our clips for now, zoom this in a touch. And I would do something like, you know, push this offset up just a little bit somewhere in there, and then maybe have some contrast after that. Here's before and here's after. So we're just pushing a little bit more exposure into this maybe just take the saturation up a touch. So this is before and this is after just to get some more exposure there. And let's look at this up close and personal. We do have a little bit more noise here in the hands, which again, I would expect, you know, that'd be pretty typical of upping that exposure. This is nothing we couldn't clean up with some noise reduction and definitely not a deal breaker for me. It's just something to be aware of. So, I mean, let's try it. Let's add a little bit of noise reduction here. And I like to use a plugin called Reduce Noise by Neat Video. It's what I use on pretty much everything. And let's just take this gray back here and we'll, we'll sample that as our noise. Now I'll hit Build Profile and hit Apply. And now we're getting rid of that noise. So here it is with the noise from the camera. And here the noise is gone. In fact, we might even be taking more noise out than we really need. But that certainly cleans up and just is not much of a problem. That's the nice thing when you have this nice kind of fine noise, you can take that out and it doesn't make it look weird. It looks nice. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about that at all. Yeah, I definitely want to check the skin tones, make sure those feel good. And I mean, it looks great. So I mean, there's nothing I'd be worried about here. Something I like to do sometimes is just pump the saturation and just see what the image does. And man, right here, this is obviously way oversaturated. Yes, we shouldn't saturate this so much, but it still looks, as far as an oversaturated face, it still looks pleasing. There isn't a part where, you know, her skin is breaking and it looks like there's, you know, chunky little parts or anything like that. It's all just really, really nice. We do see a little bit more noise here, a little bit of looks like maybe sharpening here when we up that saturation. But again, this is not even realistic how much saturation I would put into this. Realistically, if I did want her like pretty colorful, I might end up somewhere in here, you know, and so here's before and here's after. It is a little bit sharp. There's a little bit of that kind of sparkly thing, which looks like sharpening to me, but overall it looks really good. One thing we see here in the camera raw is the sharpness and so we could probably just take the sharpness down to zero that'd probably fix that don't see a lot of difference there so that's really the only thing i'd be maybe be careful about are these little kind of like glittery highlights and the sharpness again for most things i mean man you're not going to worry about that it looks really nice take a look at this sky again maybe i'd take this saturation up a little bit maybe even do a little bit of s curve here to really get a nice looking poppy image right and i feel like there's a lot of room in the highlights and everything to push stuff all feels very natural this is obviously very well shot footage it looks nice but yeah it looks great man the other thing i would do for each of these is just take it through you know a full color grade of some kind right so i usually start with exposure and then we do contrast sat temperature and then maybe a couple windows before we have our transform and so let's just take this through an actual grade here so exposure i think is pretty much nailed maybe just push it up just a tiny bit but i think that looks good contrast we could definitely work on a little bit i'll just do kind of an s curve here maybe push up this bottom part just to where it feels like there's a little bit more separation yeah i like that kind of darker part here the saturation 
I feel like we could take the saturation down a touch, actually. I kind of went crazy on those dark parts, but I think it looks pretty good. The one thing I see is a little bit of banding right here. That could be just because of that same color. And we're kind of pushing that just a little hard. So I might just not push it quite that hard. I might just take this down somewhere in there. So here's without my adjustments. So just slight little adjustments there, deepening those shadows a little bit. Let's deepen those a little more. Somewhere in there, it's grading nicely. And let's just do kind of a quick look over this. Let's just go into maybe the log wheels and just push the shadows a little cool, just a touch. Take that low range and kind of mess with that just to cool the shadows a little bit. So here's difference. Just cooling those shadows ever so slightly. So here's our grade. That looks pretty nice. There's no glaring problems. I think this is a very nice format. So Nikon Z8, would I shoot with it? Absolutely. Looks great. Easy to color grade. There's lots of dynamic range. It's a nice clean signal. Very comparable to other high-end footage that I've seen and worked with. What did you think? Let me know in the comments. Is there something that I totally missed here? Or maybe even something that you've never done that you're like, ah, yeah, I should, I should test that with my camera. The one thing I would probably do is shoot a couple things underexposed and overexposed so that they're actually underexposed or overexposed in camera and then maybe bring those in and play with them. But like any camera, I mean, it's going to react the best when things are shot right on and exposed well. And it looks like when things are exposed well, this Nikon Z8, bangerang, love it. So yeah, let me know your tips and things that you do to test out a camera down below. And huge thanks to Nikon for sponsoring this video and letting us have this footage and play around with it. This was a ton of fun. Thank you guys. And I'll uh, catch you on the flip side.